Matt Freed, Naval Orange. Matt Freed, Naval Orange. Voltron. Matt Freed, Naval Orange, Voltron. Christine in a hat. Matt Freed, Naval Orange, Voltron, Christine in a hat. Matt Freed, Naval Orange, Voltron, Christine in a hat, 1973, New York Knicks. Matt Freed, Naval Orange, Voltron, Christine in a hat, 1973, New York Knicks, The Lost City of Atlantis. Matt Freed, Naval Orange, Voltron, Christine in a hat, 1973, New York Knicks, Lost City of Atlantis, Puppies. Matt Freed, Naval Orange, Voltron, Christine in a hat, 1973, New York Knicks, Lost City of Atlantis, Puppies, Weimar Republic of Germany. Matt Freed, Naval Orange, Voltron, Christine in a Hat, 1973, New York Knicks, Lost City of Atlantis, Puppies, Weimar Republic of Germany, Matt Freed, Album Face. What is up, Internet, and welcome to Sleeping In With Matt Freed, The Extra Bits. Now, some of you already know that we're currently in hiatus filming new interviews to go back up online in March of 2011. Now, in the meantime, we wanted to share with you some outtakes and bonus footage that didn't make the cut of our original set of interviews. Now, you all remember our friend, Mr. Baron Vaughn, currently the star of the hit TV series, Fairly Legal. And he was also in a funny little film called Cloverfield with his famous one-line scene. Baron included a great story about his audition and his filming in the movie Cloverfield. We thought it would be a great chance to finally get this out to the public. Remember, we're at www.sleepingpodcast.com. We're on at Sleeping Podcast on Twitter. We have a Facebook page. Download us on iTunes. Anyway, folks, here's the bit. See you in two weeks. Later. Uh, uh, apparently not. Hopefully not. Because let me tell you, Baron, I'm, I, you really burst onto the scene, and when I say into the scene, I mean into my life personally, uh, with, <laughs> with your role in Cloverfield, um, you really, can you talk, can, can you talk for a moment about, like, just how, what you did to prepare for that part in a, in a film that is, is without question regarded as one of the greatest monster movies ever made, uh, in the modern era? Well, I'll tell you, for Cloverfield, um, I, uh, my preparation started in high school. I went to a performing arts high school, okay. and then I decided to get really serious about theater and went to a theater school in Boston, Boston University, where I started doing stand-up and improvisation, and then I'd been in New York for a while, been on some plays in Broadway, and then with Cloverfield, what it came down to was I had big hair. So all that other stuff didn't matter. They're like, how about that guy with that huge afro? And that's the... <laughs> All, I, all, all, the, all the theater preparation I had is moot compared to growing hair fast. Mm, mm. You know, I heard the same thing happen to Richard Pryor when he grew out his mustache. That was, that was the career launcher right there. Everyone's just like, that guy's got a mustache. Put him on television. Yeah, basically. And then he became the greatest comedian of all time. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, well, Cloverfield, was, uh, you know, it was fun. It was like the audition was improv and... Um, First of all, what's funny about it is that Cloverfield is a street in Los Angeles, in Santa Monica. Yeah. And J.J. Abrams' office is on the street. So he just, as a working title, called it Cloverfield. It had nothing to do with anything. And then, um, but it, it, it confounded people so much that he was just like, I'm just going to keep it. Like, people are like, what does that mean? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to keep it. I'm J.J. Abrams. I can do whatever I want. Uh, and the script, like, people are auditioning for it. And the thing about the... He was writing scenes that, because the whole movie was improvised. Right. You know, like, so it's like, that's why someone like T.J. Miller um, was a, a great addition to it, because T.J. is a really great improviser. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, he had it outlined, but when people were auditioning for it, they didn't tell anyone what the movie was, they didn't tell what it was about, and they just, he had written scenes mm -hmm. um, just for people to audition. And they had nothing to do with anything. Mm -hmm. Like, the scenes were in the movie at all. I remember having some scene about, like, uh, I was talking to this guy about how I was opening a coffee shop in Silver Lake, which is, like, it's the Williamsburg of Los Angeles. Right. And it's like, yeah, I'm opening a coffee shop in Silver Lake. I know. I'm that guy. <laughs> Nothing like that at all was in the movie. Just like, ah, I'm opening this coffee shop, dude. I got this. I got these backers. I know. I know. A coffee shop. And, like, I'm like okay. So the, they cast people off of their improv skills. And um, nobody still knew what it was. Like, we were filming it. And I got there at 10 o'clock at night in the Lower East Side, and we filmed it until the sun came up. That's the only reason we started. We stopped filming. So it was like us on the roof, a guy being like, okay, you're on the roof. You guys had a party. You're at the party. The building starts shaking. It's like some sort of earthquakes going on. You all run up to the roof to see what's happening. Then you look over there. You see those buildings over there? 
an explosion happens. Wow. You're all like, what? An explosion. Then debris starts flying at you. Everybody cool? Everybody call? All right? Action. And that was basically it. I mean, but but you guys all, I, there had to be at one point in the process where they finally told you what the movie was all about because the, the so so like when Lizzie Kaplan, when Lizzie Kaplan gets attacked in that movie at one point where they're just kind of like, well, maybe you wouldn't, I, I, don't, I don't know, you weren't in that scene, but maybe they were just like, like, you're just being covered by rats. You're being covered by rats well, right now. Well, the main cast knew what okay. was going on. Okay. And they had been filming, but the thing is that they filmed most of that in, in Los Angeles. There was a few things they did in New York. Oh. Like that party scene, some stuff on the street mm -hmm. in the Lower East Side. I think it was like, uh, I want to say it was uh, Ludlow okay. or something. They had kind of blocked off that street. So they filmed most of it in L.A. But we, the people who were just there that day, had absolutely no idea what it was about. I found out it was a monster movie from the blogs. Like, I went on to my nerdy movie blogs, and that's how I found out. People were like, oh, this movie Cloverfield, it's like a, a monster movie, but filmed with, you know, like, handheld cameras. And I was like, oh, that's that's the thing I did a week ago? Interesting. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy, dude. But hey, you still got a paycheck, and you got a nice little scene out of it, too. So you can't complain about that. Yeah, I was in the preview. Everyone was like, I just saw your hair on screen. Is that your face? Um... <laughs> But uh, uh, 